So we're going to talk here about the evidence for semi-conservative replication. And as you know, semi-conservative replication is the um, most held to theory about how we think DNA replicates. And that is that it unravels and it uses the two um, parent strands um, as a template for making two new strands of DNA. Um, now, the famous experiment which is used kind of as evidence for this is Meselson and Stiles' experiment using E. coli. And so E. coli bacteria um, are, were useful to be used in this experiment because um, obviously bacteria reproduce quite quickly. So you're able to kind of see the effects of um, the changes that they make um, quite relatively quickly. Um, and also you can supply bacteria with the nutrients that you want them to incorporate into their cells um, quite easily. You can isolate them, you can just you give them the nutrients that you want them um, to use. So in this case, we've got some um, two um, petri dishes here. We've got some bacteria which have been grown in um, a nutrient agar with um, the, this heavier isotope of nitrogen, N15. And then we've got another petri dish which have been grown in nitrogen 14. And as those bacteria are growing, they're gonna use the nitrogen that they've been supplied with to incorporate that into any um, biological molecules which they're making. So if you think about the biological molecules we've learned about, we've got amino acids, they've got nitrogen in, um, as do um, the bases, um, G, C, A and T, which then go to be part of our nucleotides, which are then in DNA and RNA. So these bacteria here, any amino acids they make, any DNA that they make is going to include either the heavy form of nitrogen, in the case of the N15 one, or the lighter, the regular form of nitrogen, in the case of the N14 one. And once you've done that, you can then extract the DNA from these bacteria um, and that extracted DNA can then be put into a centrifuge and you learn all about these um, when you did about cells and can be whizzed up and you would end up with something like this, that um, the bacteria that have been grown in the N15 would have a band which would appear lower down than the um, bacteria that had been grown in the N14. And these two tubes here uh, can then act as our control to compare the experiments um, which are done later too. So what they did to start off with is they grew some bacteria in a medium that was exclusively nitrogen 15. Okay, so like we saw earlier, all of the biological molecules in those bacteria and all the DNA, all the amino acids would be this heavy form. And then those bacteria were transferred into a agar dish with nitrogen 14, and they were allowed to replicate just once. And so what would then happen here, and if we just think a little bit about the theory here, we've got our DNA being unraveled, and all of these new nucleotides, which are now being used, these are all gonna have been made, these bases here will all have been made using N14 and all of these would have been made using N15. And they come and assemble in place. And what you is being postulated would happen is that the two daughter strands of DNA being made are gonna be half N15, the stuff that was grown, up, grown in the first place, and half N14, um, the stuff that was added. And what you would then find, or what they did then find when they um, whizzed, extracted that DNA and whizzed it up in a centrifuge, is actually when they compared to the controls, the, um, the band which appeared wasn't in the same place as the N15 band, it wasn't in the same place as the N14 band, but it was actually halfway in the middle, which suggested to Meselson and Style that the DNA which was being made after one generation was all half nitrogen 15 and half nitrogen 14, as we saw in this diagram here. Now, further evidence appears for that if you let the bacteria then um, replicate one more time. So if you were to take, leave that bacteria for another